Our next guest is a film legend responsible for some of Hollywood's most memorable movies, including A Beautiful Mind, Apollo 13, Parenthood. His movies, by the way, have grossed over $4 billion. <gasps> Let's welcome right now Academy Award winning producer Brian Grazer. He's also the author of the new book. It's called there you are. Face Look to you. Face, The Art of Human Connection. And Brian, thanks for being here. It's great to see you. I'm glad to see you guys. He heard the great. $4 billion number and he was like, what? I think it was actually yeah, like, I've gotten enough of that. Closer to 40. 4.2 billion. 40? 40? Well, in, in the stats, it says 13 and a half billion. 13 and a half and billion. And that was a, like a 1980s number. Where did we get he four knows, points? He's, okay. he's thinking back end, I know. Uh, well, look, this is a business show. I know the numbers. Yeah, least. and there's proof yeah. of it right there. Well, some. All right, well, let's talk about <laughs> yeah. your new book. Okay. Because we read through it and uh, have been debating this morning about whether we could actually follow some of the rules that you lay <laughs> out in it. It's all about face-to-face -face communication, relationships that you build with people, and, and not transactionary re relationships, but real relationships and why that makes a difference in business. Listening to the numbers, seeing your career, seeing what's happened, we should listen. Tell us why this came about and how. What do you, what do you mean when you say face-to-face -face connections? Well, what it means is, first of all, for 35 years, every two weeks I go out and I meet somebody new. I mean, I reach out into the world and pull somebody into, into my life or we meet, and it, they're, <clears throat> these people are experts in anything other than show business. Could be financial, in fact. But it's science, medicine, politics, religion, all art forms, athletics. And the point of that is to import new ideas or fresh perspectives into Hollywood. Because otherwise you just, you know, you probably know this pretty well, but otherwise you're just breathing the same Hollywood air in the same way you guys might be breathing the same sort of financial air. And so you want to sort of disrupt that and inform yourself so you can expand your emotional, intellectual possibilities. So then I realized that none of these conversations would have been of any value had I not actually looked at somebody face to face. Because when you look at somebody, you immediately validate them as a human being. You're saying, I see you, you see me, we're both, there's a common thread. We're in the same species, part of the same species. Then if you do this and you, you can actually reach somebody's heart, and that's what movies do. Great movies reach your heart, and that's why great movies are really effective in creating memorable emotional moments. And that's optimally what you want to do because it differentiates you or the movie differentiates itself from other movies. You, know, you want to be different. What you say, I think, applies not just to the movie business, though, and, and something you just said struck me, the idea that we could be maybe talking to too many financial people and be in our own bubble and everybody yeah. in their own bubble with those things. That's how problems like the financial crisis come about. If you're not out there <laughs> listening and talking to other people, I think it, it's true in every business. Yeah. You have to, so, and I have just found that doing, having these, oh, being very open, a couple of things are just, uh, or, or must, or constant. You have to be open-minded. Uh -oh. You have to uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about somebody that isn't open minded. So. Right, exactly. All right, so you do have to be open minded and you have to put your smart tools like your phone and your iPad, those are very, very good resources. They're the greatest invention of, of all time, your smartphone. But you're, you're not going to really connect with somebody if you're doing your smartphone and talking at the same time because they're going to feel disrespected. They're not going to, it's not going to make them feel good. And what you want, you're, if you're trying to raise money or you're trying to have an impact on somebody, your story starts the minute you see them. That's where, that's where the story starts. You know who understood this really well? Walt Disney. If you go to Walt Disney, his theme parks are different than every other theme park because the story starts in the parking lot. And then if you go to the, the Matterhorn or any of the rides, the story then continues in the line. Other theme parks don't do that. So I, I think that stories are everything. They're the subjective experience that pull you into something and make you care. Can I just ask you a generational <coughs> question, though? Generational. Uh -oh. generation, no, no, because you talked about the smartphone, and I feel yes. like there's an entire generation of people who are communicating in a completely other way, and I'm not even part of that generation, by the way, <laughs> meaning the yes. idea of fate, like, I agree with you. I still call people on the telephone. Nobody calls people yeah, on the telephone. Yeah, I know. It's rare. My anymore. wife you text thinks it's people crazy on the that I do Nobody that. picks up the telephone anymore. Nobody, I mean, so yeah. I, the, the question is sort of, A, how this applies to this next generation, or is it just that they need to learn that this is the only way it really is going to work in the end? 
I think they have to learn this is the only way it's going to work in the end. I, I really do, because, I mean, there's the goodness part of it. It's impossible to really have, understand humanity. It's, it's really hard to understand what's going on in the streets or in a population of people. And it's almost impossible to have empathy. No matter how smart you are and how much you search, empathy comes from seeing and feeling people. It just comes from that. Empathy is central to the, to the survival of our species. I, yeah, I think he's onto. I mean, I think he's onto something because uh, what you're getting at is: can you integrate human interaction with technology? Well, I'm just wondering because there's a whole generation of people who don't interact at all. They could be in the same offices and nobody even talks to each other <laughs> exactly. anymore. Exactly. Anything major needs, at the end of the day, human interaction because even when we do mergers and there are massive, complex, fundamental infrastructures behind these companies. Yeah. Every company is led by one person at the tip of the spear that needs to interact with the other person to create the magic, to create the deal. And that is human interaction. I just love that you say that, because it is really true. You're not closing any, gi no giant deals ever get closed without a face-to-face, -face, right? Correct. Because you have to have compatibility. You have to be like-minded. You have to find similar values. Correct. And that comes that way. Correct. That's how you read the variables. That everyone yeah. at the end of a deal says, let's get in a room and actually yeah. get this thing done. Yeah, you're not raising A rounds and B rounds without looking at people. And I'm not selling movies or evangelizing the amorphous idea and convincing Denzel Washington to pass up on five jobs to work on an idea that's not even written. But you can, that can be done by being face-to-face -face and evangelizing a mission or a vision. You have vision. a new project with Denzel? Well, I've done two with him, and one was American Gangster, and that he stayed with that for three years while they started it, shut it down and stopped it, and then I had to restart it with a new director and then included a new actor that would join him, which would be Russell Crowe. <laughs> Russell Crowe, even though he just won an Oscar, believed in me and what we would do in collaboration to build this role that didn't exist in American Gangster. And you can do that when you're with people. That's how you create teams. What, what about some of your ideas, just bringing in normal people who aren't related to the movie business? What, what are some of your favorite movies that have developed out of just... They've come that way? Me? Yeah, like well, a Backdraft or... A Backdraft was amazing. Okay, hold on. I want to give you... Uh, no, I never talk about Backdraft. Backdraft came about... I was surfing in Malibu at a place called Old Joe's. Mm -hmm. Some guy says to me, hey, aren't you the producer? And I, I, I whatever, I, I said, yeah, I, I wanted to just blow him off. He, wa he had this idea about firemen. And he was once a SWAT team cop. He was the sheriff in Malibu, which I didn't know. And he was a martial arts expert, which I, by the way, I was more inter I was interested in the martial arts. I said, I'll let you work on one of my TV series as a consultant if you teach me Aikido Karate. Then I bought the backdraft thing for a very substantial amount of money. I said, look, I don't need, you don't have to write anything. I'll do it. And that became the seed that became the movie, the fireman movie, Backdraft. That's crazy. But I have entire food chains that are built on random conversations or meetings. I was sitting in the back seat of a taxi cab here in your city, New York, uh, t over 20 years ago, and a, one of your shock jock guys is interviewing on the radio, old dirty bastard, <laughs> uh, ODB. I remember him. And you remember him? Yeah. yeah. So he was the insane voice of the Wu-Tang Clan. It was 25 years ago. And he's so wild and crazy, and he doesn't know how many wives he's got or how many kids. And, he, and I thought, who is a man called ODB? Who's ODB? So I decide I'm going to meet ODB. I meet ODB two days later. It's even more insane. He won't let me go into the studio. He said, da, da, da. Anyway, ODB, turn, because I met him, turned into Knowing the RZA, which turned into American Gangster, which turned into Made in America, uh, uh, a concert I pro uh, pro uh, produced with Jay-Z, which, which became Empire, which became the Wu-Tang Clan, oh, which is out on, that is out on Hulu right now. Right. All because I met this one person.